My name is Maytam Al Hulu. I am a consultant dermatologist working and living in Baghdad. I am also a novelist, poet, and civil rights activist. The theme of this TEDx is every journey matters, and that's exactly how I look at the current situation in Iraq. When, when almost everything about, around you is dark and depressing, you may explore your options. You may, you may even choose the easy ones, to give up or to surrender. But you remember reading this somewhere. It is not over. Nothing is over until we decide it is. You start to think about concepts like the butterfly effect, where tiny factors may play a role in major events. Small steps remain important if they are in the right direction. I'm thinking of this butterfly effect. I found myself here today in Leicester talking about my journey, my little contribution to the installation of hope in Iraq. Speaking of hopes, many Iraqis were on a date with hope in 2003. You may agree or disagree with the war, but the fall of the most brutal tyrant you can ever imagine triggered many hopes among Iraqis. Hopes for justice, freedom, dignity, human rights, equality, and democracy. What has happened was completely different. The Islamist Salafist parties dominated the Iraqi political scene after 2003. Hate speech, discrimination, intolerance, and division prevailed. Civil war knocked on our doors. We Iraqis watched helplessly and painfully our country falling apart. A few marks the size of explosions that take place in Baghdad in the last 13 years using a red dot on a map, the, the result will be something like this. A red map. This represents suicide bombers, car bombs, ex improvised explosive devices. In addition, Iraq witnessed an outside law killing by gangs and militias. Many Iraqis were displaced from their homes just because of their names religion or sect. The hopes that came with the fall of the criminal regime were finally replaced by fear and pain. In the middle of all this chaos, darkness and destruction, it was very easy to give up. However, I thought, it is not over yet. The main question I used to ask myself then was what to do. I was more interested in the root of the problem the mechanism that started and maintained the conflict. And I believed that the root of, a, of the problem was epistemological or conceptual in nature. And that's how our project, to, this, to those who dare to be rationalists, started. A small project with an aim to encourage free thoughts, critical thinking, and subsequently a humanistic approach to our problem. We hope to spread secular values, civil ideas, human rights, women's rights, and equality with a small group of friends who have the same or similar interests. We started our projects by arranging regular meetings every Friday, the weekend in Baghdad, to discuss and share these ideas. The main venue for these meetings was what has become, although not formally called, Baghdad Speaker's Corner. In the center of Baghdad, there is a well-known small street called al Mutanabi Street. It took its name from an Iraqi poet lived in the late 10th century. The street is famous for bookshops, sidewalks, booksellers, and it's also the meeting place through its art centers and cafe for many Iraqi intellectuals, thinkers, researchers, writers, artists, and many ordinary Iraqis. 
Every Friday, hundreds or even thousands of people gather to, uh, in the Al-Mukhanabi street to buy books and to get involved in many activities and events that take place in the street. These events are usually of civic nature, including art, poetry, music, voluntary workshops, and uh, voluntary work and dialogue workshops. My decision was to meet in a place at the riverside end of Al Mutanabi Street called Al Qishla. the fortress of Baghdad, which was built by the Ottoman Empire in 1855 as headquarters for their troops in the region. al qisla was used by the Iraqi government as a governmental center during monarchy. It has one of the oldest clock towers in the world, and nowadays al qisla is shaping up as an area of free speech and an area of various artistic and cultural activities. Our meeting took place every Friday, every week, in al Qishla, in the open air. We usually announce our program in advance on our Facebook pages, and everybody is welcome to attend these activities. The project was primarily designed to promote critical thinking at the expense of the prevailing poetic culture in Iraq. Our first and frequent theme of our talks and discussions was a constructive critique of the religious texts, especially those that underpin intolerance, hatred, and violence. We advocate a different and a humanistic reading for these texts, away from the mythological and fairy reading imposed by or used by the Islamist and Salafists to control people. We did and we continue to do that in the open air in Baghdad, which is one of the most dangerous places now in the world. On the 5th of March, 2007, a car bomb exploded in al Mutanabi Street, the same street I told you before. It killed 26 people and injured many others. These are the photos for the explosion. Many cafes and bookshops were destroyed. However, that didn't prevent people from attending activities in the street. The number of people attending our meetings and discussions increased and grew gradually week after week. All ideas were open to discussion we emphasize that no one owns the truth or has the authority to impose his opinion on others. Our group started to attract many Iraqi intellectuals, thinkers, writers, and artists. They talked about their expertise in our group, and many topics were discussed. And our group started to expand beyond the limitation of time and place. They, we, are, we started to participate in activities of similar nature outside al Qishla and any day in the week. At first, I was not sure of my ability to continue. The work in this voluntary field was consuming a large part of my already busy time with my professional work as a doctor in Baghdad. However, the seed of hope started to grow, and I was encouraged to continue. We started to participate in campaigns confronting discriminating laws, for example, those laws against human rights, women, li women rights, and laws interfering with the freedom of thought, speech, and expression, and we've succeeded in some of these campaigns. In the last year, 2015, the Iraqi civil movements led to huge demonstrations and protests demanding reforms and end of corruption. For the first time in Iraq after 2003, those demonstrations were not based on religious, ethnic, or sectarian lines. Our group, to those who dare to be rationalists, 
play a an, an prominent role with other Iraqi civil movements in the preparation and coordination for these demonstrations. Our goal was to produce a new political contract between the people and the government in which all Iraqis have their rights regardless of their religion, sect, ethnic, or even thought. These demonstrations and protests continue till now. These are the photos of the demonstrations we've participated in, and you can see more <laughs> there. Edward Said pointed out in his important book, Orientalism, in 1978, to the stereotypes made by the West toward the East during the colonial period. Nowadays, the stereotypes in the Middle East is that of intolerance, violence, extremism, and superstition. Sadly, this image is correct to a large extent. But what is not noticed by the West is that there is a new movement growing gradually in the Middle East. These movements advocates for humanistic and secular values. Access to information provided by the internet play a significant role in the appearance of these movements, and these movements are mainly endorsed by young people and supported by young intellectuals. Nowadays, social media become a media and a tool and play a significant role in the change in the Middle East. This movement seems like a faint melody in the background of noise and chaos. Yes, it is faint, but it is loud enough to create hope the hope that gave our journey motivation and determination. After all, yes, our journey does matter because we will not give up. And yes, it is not over yet. Thank you. <laughs>